The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. So this time of year, corn agronomists can actually get into the field and uh, take a look at plots such as this one behind me. All the varieties in this plot, 15 or 16 of them I think, have tasseled out and are most of the way through pollination. So we can start to assess relative maturity amongst hybrids and uh, for us at Pride Seeds, you know, it's a confirmation of our maturity ratings on the hybrids to see how things fit together on our customers' farms and also to evaluate against competitor product. I just took a random sampling of years here. The, the one on your left is uh, about halfway through pollination. We see a few brown silks, but also quite a few silks that are still attached to the kernel. So pollination's underway. That's one of the later hybrids in this plot. This is a couple of years from some of the earlier hybrids in the plot, and they are white going on yellow blister. There's not much in the way of silk still attached to the tip, so that's an indication of pretty good pollination there. Um, but what we can look at here is basically the time to go to maturity and uh, really from full tassel a corn plant has about 65 days of seasonal weather to get to the end to get the black layer um, so you can you know you can do a really rough calculation from there but of course as the season goes on it's easier to calculate again through the different growth stages but white going on yellow blister depending on whether this has another 40 to 50 days to go to, uh, to reach black layer in that 31 to 34 percent maturity. I like to use 32. Uh, so that's one of the things we're looking for. Of course, certainly growers, uh, and depending on your marketing plan, you like to see what you got. So post-pollination, you can see what you got in terms of yield, or at least start to. There's still an opportunity for a few tip kernels to abort. If the weather turns poor, uh, hot and dry, let's say, but by and large, once once the, the ear is pollinated, you can see what you got and you can start to do some rough kernel counts. These ears are about 16 to 18 around by 34, 35 kernels long at 30,000 plants per acre. Uh, I calculate that out very conservatively, very conservatively at uh, around 180 bushels if every year is like that. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But uh, I always use a factor of about 90,000 kernels per, per bushel uh, as my multiplier. Some of the larger seeded varieties, you would use a number around 70 or 75. However, that gives you a, a very high estimate. And if you're looking to forward market grain prior to harvest, that might not be in your best interest. So I always play it conservatively and use 90,000 with an expectation that some poor areas of the field are less than what I'm holding in my hand here. So that's one tool you can use to start to assess yield and maturity of hybrids, but also comes down to population and how many harvestable ears do you have. So here beside me I have a couple of pretty weak stalks of corn, uh, very limited or no ear, uh, very spindly. They obviously got started late compared to, you know, a more typical plant out of this beautiful stand of corn behind me here with uh, either one or two nice ears on it and uh, nice big full leaves, nice stalk and everything. So these are late emergers, so we can look back at what went on in the spring. And in this area of Ontario, May basically had uh, two weeks in there. There was a, a couple of uh, near frost or frost events, uh, cold weekends, May 10th, 11th, 12th in that area. We actually got a little bit of snow in some areas and it got cold. And uh, some of the stands that were seeded before that time, uh, there are a few late germinators or seeds that were misplaced into drier soil bed conditions would have been affected by frost and you end up with a late emerger in this this here on your left versus what you're after over in this hand. Uh, there was another extended cold period around the 23rd to the 28th of May so basically two weeks later that caught a few other stands of corn and, and thinned out some harvestable ears in the end. So there are a lot of stands of corn where the grower may, to, may have uh, drop 33, 34,000 seeds per acre, let's say, but there may only be 28 to 30,000 harvestable ears in there, and that's based on, on what you see going on here. Uh, there are varying degrees depending, depending on planting date, soil conditions, and above all, soil temperature at the time of planting, and what happened in the next 48 hours after that seed was put in the ground. So we can assess things like this at this time, again, uh, what contributes and detracts from overall yield in the end. 